fans of high quality entertainment. Today I thought I would talk about the four Beatles box sets that have been released so far. Abbey Road, Sgt. Pepper, The Beatles White Album, and Let It Be. And I just saw this online and maybe some of you know about it but it's news to me. Beatles archive producer Giles Martin confirmed that both Revolver and Rubber Soul reissues are being considered. <laughs> considered. <laughs> While chatting with Variety, Giles was asked if the Fab Four's pre-1967 catalog will get the detailed and specialized treatment that, that the later works have, specifically 1966's Revolver. And he said, I think we have to do it, and I've said this before. If you take something like Taxman from Revolver, a track often cited for its bizarre stereo separation, Taxman is guitar, bass, and drums on one track, and vocals in a sort of shaking and guitar solo on the right. And it sounds good. They're amazing recordings and amazing mixes. You know, we have to look into what technology we can do to make things demixed, and all this kind of stuff, which I'm looking into. He added, I'm looking for the technology to do it with, to do something really innovative with Rubber Soul and Revolver, as opposed to just a remastering job, because it's been remastered already. So I think we will. I think we also will look at outtakes as well. So that's something to hopefully look forward to. So these are the four box sets, like I said, that are, have been released so far. And I'm go going to rank them from my least favorite, although <laughs> every one of these I love, from my least favorite to my favorite. So here we go with number four, which is The Beatles' Abbey Road. It was the, uh, I would say, the most underwhelming of the box sets so far, and I would say even disappointing, not <laughs> you know, not the album itself, even the remix overall is great. I enjoyed it. But, you know, not really much to the box set. The, uh, the CDs are up there with my Beatles CDs. And it comes with a nice book, but... Not even that thick of a book and... Very nice photos, though, for sure. Thumbnail. So the remix itself, I mean, the the original uh, from 1969 <laughs> sounds amazing as it is, but it was still interesting to hear the remix. Ooh, nude picture of John and, John and Yoko. We'll skip that page. <laughs> yeah, the remix is uh, interesting. I, I enjoy it. But uh, when I go to play Abbey Road, for the most part, I usually go to the remastered uh, one from 2009. I'm happy with that. But I do play the remixed one sometimes. I find it interesting. And... And really cool. Yeah, really nice photos in this. It's just compared to some of the other box sets, a little underwhelming. And yeah, so Abbey Road CD1 is the 2019 mix by Giles Martin. And very happy with it, but like I said, <laughs> I could play either one, and I'm, I was happy with the, uh, the original remaster from 2009. But it's still, like I said, interesting to have it remixed. And then CD2, the, uh, the Sessions, CD3 Sessions, and the last one is the Blu-ray Audio, so just two CDs of, of sessions, and they're interesting to to uh, listen to once or twice, but I usually don't go back to them too much. I don't know about you. Um, you know, hearing Goodbye, the home demo by 
Paul McCartney and the different takes, you know, Old Brown Shoe, Take Two, uh, and then the original way the, that side two was going to be playing with Her Majesty in between, no, it's just called the, the long one, but Her Majesty was in between Mean Mr. Mustard and Polythene Pam, or somewhere in between there. I don't remember. <laughs> it's been a while since I played it. But yeah, it's it's an interesting lesson, but it's my least favorite of the box sets. So it comes in at number four. But I'm still very happy that I bought it. Number three is Let It Be. <laughs> With the upside down book that I got. That's right. In case uh, you're new to my channel or you haven't <laughs> seen my other videos on Let It Be. Yeah, this was misprinted. The cover, how, how does that work? The, either the cover is upside down or the cover's right. Yeah, the cover's right, but the inside is upside down or the other way around. I don't want to get all technical on you, but <laughs> And I think I did read a comment that somebody, one or two other people do have this too. I don't know if it's going to be a collector's item or, or not, but I'll sell it to you for $10,000, no problem. But it's a very nice book, especially the right side around. <laughs> but it's about the same... Maybe even a little thinner than the Abbey Road book. But I will say the remix by Giles Martin is much improved over the, uh, the remaster from 2009 and the original album. Much clearer. And uh, along with the Get Back documentary, I, I love Let It Be more than ever. Comes with the uh, 1969 Glenn Johns mix, which was was okay, but I'm glad that that wasn't the one that was released. And the uh, Get Back Apple Sessions, the little mini EP, which some people aren't that happy with, but it's okay. So it has the Blu-ray on disc six, and then one, two. Two discs of rehearsals in Apple Jams, which are interesting to listen to. But, you know, I don't go back to them that much. When I buy this, I listen to it once or twice, and then <laughs> I just go back to listening to the album. But I do, between the, the remix and the, the original, I listen to the remix a lot more. I really enjoy it. And then disc for the uh, Glenn Johns mix. I don't listen to very much either. But overall, it's very good. I was happy, but, except for the upside down printed book. <laughs> so number two is either the Beatles White Album or Sgt. Pepper. Well, you're wrong. Number two for me is Sgt. Pepper, which is awesome. The 3D cover, which uh, when I did the unboxing, you know, I did the video of going to the record store to pick this up and unbox it. I didn't even know this was in 3D, so it was a very pleasant surprise. And definitely the, the whole package is a 10 out of a 10. No, it's 11 out of 10. And I like the fact that it it comes with what looks like the album cover and the album background, but inside is just all of the CDs, and like I said, most of them are up with my other Beatles CDs, except for the Blu-ray and the DVD. And of course it came with uh, a poster, which I have on my wall over there. with another poster being for the benefit of Mr. Kite of 
course it comes with the fantastic <laughs> cutouts. I still remember 1967 when, uh, so I was 50, I was nine years old and had the album and, you know, I saw this for the first time. I was thinking to myself, boy, this is pretty lame, pretty stupid, but I think it was meant to be kind of silly, I hope. Yeah, and the, the book is, you know, about the same as the other ones, I guess, but very classy. Just like the inner sleeve of the original vinyl. So I was not underwhelmed at all with this. I think most Beatles fans were very happy with it. Uh, very classy. Now for the remix itself. Very happy with it. Uh, so, yeah, I, I would, for this one, I would say it changes. Sometimes I listen to the remix and sometimes I like to listen to the original because the original <laughs> I was always happy with too, just like Abbey Road. Yeah, four audio CDs. So, so the stereo remix, I, th I thought that Giles Martin did a superb job on it. Really, uh, giving the the whole thing more space hearing you know the vocals more up front especially the, the beginning with uh, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band right away it's like whoa this is <laughs> quite different than the original and the mono on here is interesting to listen to although I, I don't listen to it too often and then the bonus tracks are you know uh, different takes and everything I, I've never I enjoyed listening to them once or twice and then, you know, rarely listen to them. Although, of course, the remix of Strawberry Fields Forever and Penny Lane, I, I love on this. You know, I don't even know if I've ever watched the uh, Blu-ray DVD of the fully restored 1992 documentary, The Making of Sgt. Pepper. And I don't think I've... <laughs> I've even, I, I mean, I had seen it originally or maybe on YouTube a few years back, but I need to watch that sometime. But overall, excellent. It's not my number one, but it's, it could be. The, the one thing that I do like about the original uh, A Day in the Life is I like it when John's vocals start on one speaker, on headphones or on speakers, and then they drift off to the to the other side and everything and on on this they're all in the middle which is fine but i'm saying you know i'm just saying that the original of that you know sometimes it would be annoying hearing beatles vo beatles vocals just on one side but for a day in the life i thought that was pretty pretty cool so what would be my number one it is <clears throat> the beatles white album Once again, all the CDs are with the other Beatles CDs. This plastic thing has been a little annoying. But there it is. It's even got the emboss there, which is cool. Comes with the poster, uh, which I've got the poster and the pictures somewhere. I use those pictures when uh, Molly and I do the Guess Which Beetle is Singing. And yes, we're going to do another one of those because uh, Molly enjoys doing them and they seem to overall get good comments. So just another nice book. This one's the thickest of them. Some really nice photos.
Yep, there's the post. I wasn't sure where I had it. Uh, the good old days of vinyl when you would sometimes buy a, a vinyl record and get posters and all kinds of cool knickknacks. <laughs> That's what one thing that was kind of disappointing with Abbey Road. All you got inside it was a record. What a ripoff. So the, the Giles Martin remix, overall, very happy with it. When I listen to the White Album, sometimes I listen to the original and sometimes I listen to the remix. The only thing, you know, there's some songs like Helter Skelter where I prefer the original compared to the to the remix. That's the one song that I feel that Giles Martin kind of screwed up with the remix. So there's the Blu-ray of the White Album, which I've never I do have a Blu-ray player on my computer, but I've never, never listened to this. And I don't have a 5.1 surround system. And then the uh, individual albums, so... Yeah, I love how uh, Giles kind of brought, brought up the vocals, for instance, on George Harrison's Long, 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 where you can actually hear him <laughs> singing. Uh, but I love... Now, the Escher demos I like. They're really good, you know, the acoustic CD. But what I really love are the other three CDs. I think they're some of my favorite uh, demos or bonus cuts on any album. Uh, like Take One of Hey Jude is amazing. Uh, just so much. And what I really love, too, is li listening to it. It's like the Beatles are playing live a lot of the time and they sound so damn good and they sound like they're having fun and it's just like uh, even back before seeing the Get Back documentary it was like you know the Beatles were getting along a bit better than I thought they were not that they they didn't have their arguments or anything and I know that Ringo walked out and later on George walked out they weren't always happy times but they still created a lot of fantastic music so I love the uh, all of the bonus tracks. I would love your thoughts on the Beatles box sets in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and have a great day.